The fifth round of the Reject Truck Super Series season takes place at the Chicagoland Speedway. This is a 147 lap race, the longest on the calendar, with a field of 34 instead of the usual 25. Antonio Del Vecchio's Ram leads the field to the green flag. Jackie Gardner in the number four Holden uh, starts on the outside of the front row. Uh, and there you see Richie Foley in truck 15, who has been reasonably quick all weekend. Rick DeGlai Jr. in that seven truck uh, was actually the favorite for pole, but uh, uh, he is not on pole. That seven truck was quickest over a long run in practice. And also, I'd watch out for that 40 of Quinton Voss. But there you see Antonio Del Vecchio showing how you surrender the lead in lap one. Uh, takes the high line and um, gets passed by Richie Foley. Well, uh, that didn't take long for a lead change. Uh, Richie Foley in this 15 truck. Uh, Richie Foley's not running with a teammate. The Gotham Racing for, uh, Ford uh, team did not bring another truck here when several, there were a couple teams in the field that brought uh, additional entries for this race as Rick DeGlai Jr. goes right by Foley to take the lead. He's not wasting any time. One of those teams that brought uh, an extra truck is the, is the Henry Racing Technologies team. Oh, and that's Clement Grand Meissen as he almost gets into Giovanni Rota and Sasha Hawk and almost causes a huge wreck. But, um, uh, you can play can count by the regular drivers you saw right there in the 42, the 84 of Gun Meissen here uh, as well for a one-off. Here is that was Dougal Kerr in the 34 who's already lost the pack. Scott Belsiner in the 99 truck is closing in on the 7 of Rick Douglas Jr. for the lead. Uh, Belsiner making his debut replacing Aileen Mori and uh, Wayne Shepard into the pits in the W2 racing entry so that 98 truck's already had some problems. Steven Generic in the Gentep Racing uh, Team entry. He's got smoke coming out of the back of that thing, and that's going to be an early retirement for the 14 truck. It's a pretty big disappointment for this team because they were really fast at uh, Walt Disney World. Here is Graham Meissen as Lance Brown getting to the back of Sandra Sessler. Uh, gets that thing a little bit sideways. Uh, hangs onto it, and Grand Meissen going to go, uh, looks like he's going to poke his nose in the inside, go right on by, and right behind him is the 28 of Giovanni Rota. 98 of Wayne Shepard. Apparently, that when they pitted, they must have taken the mirrors off of that thing because, as you can see right here, he has no idea he's got the rest of the field behind him. I'm sure his spotter might be yelling at him, but um, at some point, uh, you have to you have to stop blaming the spotter. Um, that excuse only goes so far as one of the Far Horizon Motorsports entries, Todd Cockburn in the 35 truck is out of the race. They entered six trucks for this race, none of them particularly fast. Here is the 99 of oh, Scott Belsteiner going right on by, so we're putting his Toyota to the lead. Uh, driving for uh, the Crusaders, it's the name of the team. Uh, pretty interesting bunch down there with that 99 truck. Belsteiner will be in that truck for this race and for the next event, but uh, beyond that, who knows? Uh, they're not on the uh, provisional entry list for race 7. Uh, here is the number 7 truck of Rick Glai Jr. going back to the lead of the race as Yarabok Petrovich pits the 54 car for a uh, cut tire and uh, or rather a tire going down and he pit that thing before he threw it in the wall as Wayne Shepard pick a lane son as there goes the 99 right on by um, the 98 to take the lead of the race uh, to take lead of the race from Glai Jr. as Douglas Kerr's night couldn't get any worse he's already a lap down and we're not even 20 laps into this race that's going to be a long night for some of these Far Horizon Motorsports entries. Here's another one, Gordon Martin. Oh, oh, contact with Jeff Donnelly in the 71 and into the wall. Both of them go. Donnelly is in this race as a one-off, and so is Gordon Martin. And and here comes the rest of the pack right on by going to miss this. Del Vecchio slowing down for the wreck in the 22. Hits the paint. Uh, oh, Foley! Oh, no! Oh, and we got a huge pile up here. That had no reason happening. No reason to happen. Richie Foley slow, trying to slow it down. Slow it down, but then just decides, nope, I think I'm going to gas it up again. Run into the back of the 22. Bounces the 22 in front of, um, well, that huge pack of trucks right there. All of whom would have missed this this uh, secondary collision had it not happened. And I think, as you see, we're, we were on board with the Julius Fenger, right? Um... There's Ryan Zimmer in it, the 31. This was pretty silly. You do race back to the cautions in this series, but still, that's a little bit on the silly side. 
Bell Steiner leads on the restart in the 99. Doug Glide Jr. Uh, coming on the inside. Geinhardt Jr. in the 17 is running in third, and that 50 truck is Tempicoast. That David Tempicoast, a uh, one-off entry for the Gen Temp guys. That's, um, they still have that rather interesting paint job as Tempicoast goes to the lead. Geinhardt Jr. goes to second. Now, got Manny Geinhardt Jr. is one of the more experienced guys out here. A 17 truck, he's not really had too many good results. The pace is there, the results are not. With Manny Guy, oh no, and neither is the luck. As Guynert Jr. is slowing down. Uh, but it doesn't look like this is anything terminal. No, it, he's, he's coming in, they seem to be ready for him. His pit crew seems to be ready for him. It looks like he may, have, may be having a tire going down that he didn't notice under the caution. That's uh, That can happen sometimes. As uh, Tempticoast leads in the 50 truck, this is his first ever start, and uh, he's uh, doing a pretty good job on debut. Brian Zimmer in the 31 is going to be one of the uh, next trucks to go out of the race, looks like. Got smoke coming out of the back of the, of the Zim Sport entry. Silvio Rinaldi was uh, speculated to be in, the, in um, a second truck for that team later in the year. Here is Ernesto Raya coming behind. Oh, it's one of the Far Horizon trucks that looks like uh, Oscar Duck, I think. Yeah, that really is his name, Oscar Duck. As um, Nesta Ryan, that 10 truck, he's been Mr. Dependable all season long. He's, um, if I'm not mistaken, he's completed every single lap uh, so far this season. The Mexican being very, very, uh, having a very strong season. The 50 of uh, Tempicos continues to lead. And uh, nothing new up here as we've got, uh, yep, we got more fun with Oscar Duck. As he is well off the pace in that 96 truck. <clears throat> All of the Far Horizon trucks have the exact same livery on them. It's going to be near impossible to tell some of them apart because the most of them have the same number, uh, practically. Here is uh, Sandra Sessler in the 18 truck. Now, even though this is uh, a team truck to the 17 of Manny Geinhardt Jr., so if, if you may be able to notice that the, uh, that the uh, coloring is a bit lighter on this truck than on the 17. Uh, it's not too much lighter, but... Uh, Enough to where if they were running close together, you'd be able to pick them out. As you can see, Doug Lye Jr. and Quinton Voss going by. Svenjare in the 90 won the season opener. Oh, we got a stack up here. As, oh, here we go. Contact around goes the 90. That was never going to work. But at the same time, uh, that was kind of just a racing accident. It didn't hit anything. Just flat spotted the tires. And uh, on the restart. We had the 84 truck actually being scored in the lead of the race. And uh, that is Clement Grand Meissen on debut. The 17 of Manny Geiner Jr. lost a lap. So um, uh, Manny Geiner Jr. now. Now he's in the lead lap. He wants a yellow. Now. And there is the 50 of um, Tempicos coming on the inside. Geiner Jr. slides up. That 17 is going to fight the leaders to stay in the lead lap. You can bet that because if there's a caution, he's back in the race. Here is Tempicoast on the inside of Manny Geinhardt Jr. And Manny Geinhardt Jr., the racing gods are smiling on you tonight, Sunshine, because you just got a very, very lucky yellow. There is that 17 truck as he goes right on by. Uh, we're not quite sure what that yellow was actually for, but for the uninformed, it's a scientifically proven fact that an intermediate oval track race cannot exist without a phantom caution. See, you learned something tonight. Qu uh, Quinton Voss in the 40 assumed the lead of the race and Clement Grand Mason moved up to second in, as he just went around. Scott Belsiner in the 99 and it looks like that's Gardner. It's one of the aero racing engineering trucks. So it looks like they're on their way to the front with Jackie Gardner in the four and the teammate to Jackie Gardner in a nearly identical truck. The 11 is Jochen Marco as Voss uh, pulling away just a little bit but Grand Mason trying to come right uh, trying to come around the, the the outside of the four as Gardner runs Grand Mason up into the marbles, but uh, Jackie Gardner in the four truck goes right on by the 84, uh, who tried to make that high line work. But here's Rick DeGly Jr. in the seven coming to the front and David Tenpicos. Clement Grand Mason's not done up here either as Tenpicos slides up. Gardner on the outside, Grand Mason, and 84 truck really charging as they're coming to the street. Coming to the stripe, but look at that four truck making the outside work, and that's probably why. It's because Doug O'Kerr is being a roadblock in the 34. Doug Lye Jr. probably shaking his fist at him. 
Doug O'Kerr probably doesn't see him, so I don't know why you'd shake your fist at someone who I don't think knows what a mirror is. Granted, oh, Oscar, Oscar Duck the Third, I uh, better get away from him as quick as possible. Um, anyways, uh, some uh, some of the Far Horizon trucks do seem to be having problems with back with uh, with uh, being lapped, uh, and also. Um, uh, you're supposed to have a spotter in the spotter stand. I'm not sure if theirs are um, awake, but um, I don't know why. This is actually a pretty good race out there. As you saw, Tempicos go up to second. Je oh, we got oh, we got the one of the other Far Horizon trucks. Jeff Donnelly in the 71 and Richie Foley into the wall. Donnelly, oh, hold the brake, hold the brake. Oh, Donnelly, you, that wasn't necessary. If Jeff Donnelly had held the brake and stayed where he was, this wouldn't have involved. Um, Poor Doug O'Kerr in the 34. Um, he goes. He uh, had really nowhere to go because the 71 let off the brake and uh, let his truck slide uh, perpendicular to the racetrack when the rest of the field was going by at full speed. That's smart, right? The 40 truck of Quentin Voss assumes the lead of the race, and you see the uh, scoring. Uh, our little scoring box has appeared in the top right corner. As David Tempikos is running in second, we're looking at Yaropok Petrovich in the 54, because uh, there you see Dmitry Vitkin in the 13. Oh, Tempikos into the wall! Oh no! Oh, we got more tra we got more drama. No caution out though. Yeah, we have a phantom caution, but no caution for an actual crash in front of the field. Ben Vukler came flying in the uh, into the back of the 68 of Sasha Hawk, and Vukler decides to well uh, cut through the infield. He's, uh, tra he's trying to build himself an open wheel career as Benoit Vukler, but, uh, well, uh, I'm not quite sure if he wants to do it like that. Here's the 84 of Grand, Ma of Grand Mesa looking for the lead on Quentin Voss, the Glide Jr. I uh, thought about poking his nose in there. Um, thought better of it. Granted, he wasn't close enough to even consider making that move. As uh, Grand Mason goes into the lead of the race in the 84, as there's Antonio Del Vecchio. And unintentionally holding up the 40 truck as we've got Oscar Duck the third in three lanes at once. As uh, here comes Dmitry Vitkin, both of the uh, uh, James Davies trucks, the 17, Amanda Geinhart Jr. and Sandra Sessler. Geinhart Jr. is flying through the field right now. That 17 truck is easily the quickest on the racetrack. The 84 of Grand Mason leads. There's the 40 running second. Quentin Voss, this is easily his best run of the season, and Grand Mason, this is his first start. Here's Oscar Duck the third, going um, some two and a half seconds slower than the leaders, and uh, at least. And oh, he's taking Grand Mason into the wall. He just took out the leader, and that that looked pretty that looked pretty blatant to me, because he just chopped right up in front of the 84 from the middle of the racetrack, and there's really no reason for that to happen, but. In all fairness to Clement Grand Mason, what did you expect? Because we've seen what this guy's been doing all night, and uh, it seems his only purpose is to, is to um, well, anyways. Harry Albert, he didn't pit for that damage, as you can see right there. The 84 truck, Clement Grand Mason did not pit for it to repair the damage. He's still running out there, and he's still about this, and he's still one of the quickest trucks on the racetrack. Manny Geiner Jr. Fastest lap of the race in truck number 17. So, looks like his fortunes may be turning around. Now, now Clement Grand Mason's pitting the 84 truck, but uh, this is a, a ways into this run. As Sandra Sessler gets the hint, pits the 18, and uh, looks like we got quite a few people in the pits. So, green flag pit stops as we see Richie Foley in the 15 merging from pit lane in the background. Guinart Jr. in the 17. Is uh, is he heading in this time by? No. Him and Giovanni Rota. Rota's actually been making some uh, progress through this field in that 28 truck. Here's Rick Deglai Jr. in the 7. Dimitri Vitkin in the 13. Vitkin, one of the older guys in the field. Um, Vitkin's on now. Uh, he's had quite a long career. In the 90s, he was running in the Life in the Life Grand Prix series. There you see the running order with Jackie Gardner and having a fairly commanding lead at the moment. Ming score is having such. There he is in truck number four. Air Racing Engineering trying to go three in a row. Um, actually, that would make them undefeated on oval tracks. And uh, considering that uh, that's what most of this uh, series is, there you go. 
Vitkin now is taking over second, but um, there is Gardner now. Trying to going around Sasha Hawk, the slow truck of Wayne Shepard. Um, Gardner in this in number four Holden. Pulling away actually a little bit, and I didn't think that was possible. There's David Bloom in 12th, as you noticed. Uh, the resident monkey man hasn't really been mentioned much tonight, so um, David Bloom somehow not getting into trouble. Benoit Vogler in the 32 is having a stellar debut. Uh, despite Far Horizon Motorsports bringing trucks that uh, combined have about as much horsepower as a world rally car, Benoit Vogler has been having a pretty strong day uh, in that 32 truck. Having a, he's doing a good job. The truck's a, uh, the truck's a pile of junk, but he's doing fine. As uh, Oscar Duck the third in the 96 car continues to show why um uh well jackie gardner was ready for it you could you could tell gardner lifted off gardner was ready for the 96 but here comes dimitri vitkin to go right on by i have a feeling gardner didn't notice that uh vitkin was there or manny Geinart jr in the 17 or rick de jr as you saw him go by i'm not quite sure why gardner hasn't just uh turned the 96 truck into the wall. Maybe he doesn't want to damage his own truck in the process. Um, here's the 13 of Vitkin as uh, he uh, now takes over the lead. That's the Ronda and Transport and Logistics Chevrolet. Um, it's the team uh, that owns that uh, truck. Here's the, uh, the plus one, number seven. That's Rick DeGlide Jr. as he slides it up, almost taking it uh, a bit up really close to the, he's taking it really close to the wall, almost diamonding the corners here. Some of you more familiar with oval track racing may know uh, may know what I'm talking about, but there's Manny Gunnar Jr. getting stuck behind Wayne Shepard. Uh, Wayne Shepard's kind of like Oscar Duck the Third tonight, except he's not reckless. He's just slow, but it's not his fault. Uh, here is the uh, number seven truck of uh, Rick Dugly Jr. As uh, now he's trying to get around the 17 on the outside. That's not going to work. Gunnar Jr. is having a podium run here, uh, even though there's really no podium per se, but it, it still technically would be a podium finish if he finished third. Dimitri Vitkin now getting stuck behind our... Do we really need to say anything? <laughs> As there goes Quentin Voss right on by who got damaged because of uh, uh, some of Duck's craziness. As uh, Gynar Jr. goes into the lead of the race now, looks like looks like that 96 is uh, really only going after the leaders and the leader of the race and he doesn't really seem to care who the leader is. So, um... Uh, so, and, uh, 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 so, whoa, the 17 slowed down a little bit there. That must have, um, that was interesting. Probably, uh, huh. Looked like he may have just gotten a little bit loose coming in, I guess. Or just didn't like what, what the truck was doing. As, uh, Jackie Gardner goes into the lead of the race now. And, uh, Manny Geiner Jr. backing up just a little bit. And he's running a bit of a higher line, because usually when you see, uh, someone step, when you see a truck... Uh, stepping out in an oval like this, uh, usually uh, that's a bit too late. You're going to be in the wall. David Bloom is finally going the lap down. There's been so many cautions that the leaders haven't gotten a chance to put David Bloom a lap down yet. Good lord. You know this has been an interesting night when David Bloom hasn't been the biggest problem on the racetrack uh, or the slowest truck. A 44 truck, surprisingly, no marks on it yet. So, uh, David Bloom having a... Uh, by his, not, by his standards, a pretty good night. Clement Grand Mason going right on by Benoit Vukler. That's four position. I don't think Vukler was aware of that, though. Uh, the 84 truck with a lot of damage brushes off the 32. And Benoit Vukler finally goes a lap down. Uh, there's only two of the uh, Far Horizon Motorsports trucks that don't have damage on them yet. This is one of them. The other one being the 33 uh, truck, uh, which we haven't really seen much of tonight. Here is the uh, 7 of uh, Rick Duglide Jr. having a look on the 32 of Vukler to see if Vukler will get out of the way and be a courteous uh, back marker. And here comes Dimitri Vitkin going three wide on the inside. That could have ended in tears. Uh, Vitkin take, definitely took his chances there and uh, pounced. And here comes Geinert Jr. right on by as well in the 17. Uh, more back marker problems for the leader, Jackie Gardner. 84 of Grand Mason doesn't really want to lose the lap. As he is in the points along with his teammate, Yuka Pekka and Kanpa in the uh, 42. You'll also notice Giovanni Rota and Joachim Marco, 5th and 6th. And Scotty Bellsteiner still running in 7th. Gordon Martin there in the 36th truck. As uh, the leaders are 
Closing out of damage in that 36 truck looks oddly like the damage in the 96. They've been hit, they have damage in the same places. Can't even tell them apart from that now. Anyways, the Glide Jr. having a run for second on the 13 of Vidkin, as there is Gordon Martin dawdling in. Um, I was going to say in the middle of the racetrack, but everywhere on the racetrack would be apt, as uh, apt to say as well. As uh, Jackie Gardner trying to pull away a little bit, but Clement Grand Mason not wanting to. Uh, there he goes. 84 truck of Clement Grand, Ma uh, Clement Grand Mason almost wipes it out coming into pit entry, uh, along with Giovanni Rode on the 28. And here is the 17 truck. Manny Geiner Jr. He's thinking about making a move for the lead here, but at the same time, Green Flag Pit Stops did just start, and Manny Geiner Jr. slowing down. Gardner coming in as well. Jackie Gardner coming into the pits. Manny Geinhardt Jr. doing likewise in the 17. The 13 is in. That's Vidkin. Three wide coming out of the pit lane. Oh, Vidkin and is going to push this one. There goes Gardner. He Gardner bails almost into the grass. Manny Geinhardt Jr. takes the advantage there. And Dimitri Vidkin, well, uh, he had to kind of give there. Otherwise, he would have run onto the racetrack uh, and merged too early. And you're supposed to merge into the back straightaway. Or the, well, the back straightaway is curved here at Chicagoland, but... That being said, regardless, the 7 of Rick DeGly Jr. pit, a lap after everyone else did. And here is the 13 of Dimitri Vidkin with the 4 of Gardner right behind him. And uh, in front of them is going to be Rick DeGly Jr. You may see him. There he is in that uh, black and green number 7. As there is the 30, 33 truck, the Far Horizon um, truck, the... Uh, I'm not pronouncing his name. Uh, Dimitri Vidkin... Uh, is now st uh, currently in the lead of the race. There's Rick the Glide Jr. second and Jackie Gardner third. Running in fourth is the, uh, there you see Geiner Jr. Giovanni Rota still hanging in the top ten. And, uh, it looks like the top ten pretty much the same, just different order. Ernesto Raya having a strong run as, uh, Yuga Pega Kankanpa is off the lead lap now. In, and, uh, it looks like he's going backwards. Sasha Hawk has just gotten around him. Here is the here is the battle for the lead right now. This is Vidkin and Doug Light Jr. These two have been putting on a pretty good show tonight. As they're coming upon it, it's Oscar Duck. Uh, as uh, Dimitri Vidkin took his chances by going around the outside of uh, this of the 96. That's uh, that was a pretty bold move, if I may say so myself. And uh, well, anyways, there is the uh, the 84. Uh, the 84 not wanting to lose a lap. Grand Mason wants to stay on the lead lap on debut. Uh, especially given all that damage he's got. Here's the 4 though. Gardner coming into frame. Geiner Jr. in the 17 uh, truck. It's not like he had a slow pit stop, but Giovanni Rota caught him in traffic and got around him. And uh, the 17, uh, I'm not sure if he, it's just a bad set of tires in that truck or what, but Geiner Jr. sliding backwards. Uh, Joachim Marco is closing in on him. But, but in the meantime, Marco's teammate, Jackie Gardner, is trying to reel down Rick the Glide Jr. for the lead of the race with less than 15 laps to go. Here comes the 13 of Vidkin, though, on the inside, trying to make a run for it. Uh, Vidkin, who ran, of course, in the 90s in open wheelers, now here in the Reject Truck Series as we've got we've got uh, this camera looking off the back of Doug Glide Jr. we got a lot of cameras on board that machine. Um... Here is, oh, there's Wayne Shepard. Uh, Wayne Shepard, uh, he's, well, he's about as useful as a root canal right now out there. He's just getting in the way. Um, thankfully, at least he knows that he has spatial awareness, but that's about all I can say. Actually, I don't even think he has much of that right now. Dimitri Vitkin in the 13 truck, closing in now on to Glide Jr. As, uh, uh, we've got more lap trucks, I do believe, ahead. The Glide Jr., in the seven, and there you see it ahead. Looks like Foley, but oh, Vitkin! Oh, he's pushing up the racetrack. Doug Light Jr. wasn't about to cut him too much slack as they head down the main, head down to the tri oval. There is Richie Foley, and there goes Vitkin by, and there goes Gardner. So Rick Doug Light Jr. loses the lead. It's like that. Oh, it's Oscar Duck. Oh boy. I really want to know what Far Horizon was thinking when they signed some of these lunatics. Anyways, Dimitri Vitkin has now leads with less than 10 to go. Right behind him, uh, coming in uh, behind him is the four of Gardner. 
Actually, there's a bit of space between them now. Um, but it looks like he's now caught, uh, there's, there's several red trucks in the field. That's, uh, Terry Stein in the 9 truck. Um, it's the teammate to Ernesto Raya. Those are the, uh, Team Rojo trucks. Uh, the Mexican team. Ernesto Raya has been doing a very good job this season. Uh, Terry Stein, uh, not quite so much. Here he is, uh, the, here's the 84, though. The 84 of, uh, of Grand Mason wants to get back on the lead lap. He's still hoping for a late yellow, but that doesn't happen. Here's the 13 of Dimitri Vidkin. Could lose the lead now. Here, we're on lap 144 of 147, as you can see in the top left. Doug Lye Jr. back in the frame as David Tenpacost is blown up on the inside. Tenpacost is out with... He was a couple of laps down. Oh, Gardner pushing up the track. In, oh, ne nearly could have taken out Vidkin there. So Gardner being... Uh, that's, not, that's not very nice, but... Um, Doug Lye Jr. now trying to set up Jackie Gardner. Dimitri Vitkin poking his nose in there on the 13. Gardner in the 4, trying to hold on in his, where, to where he is, but the 13 does not quite have the grip on the inside. He, it looked like he was sliding it around a little bit, and that's not going to help in his case. If he is going to want to get this one now, he's only got two laps to do it. Uh, he's only got two laps now to get by the 4, and uh, I'm not quite sure he's going to have enough time to do that. But anyways... He's going to have to set him up perfectly. There's the 42 of Kinkanpa. Will the lap truck factor into the battle for the win here? Vitkin has fallen back. It's going to be the Glide Jr. or the Aero Racing Engineering truck of Jackie Gardner. Gardner trying to... As now they've taken the white flag. One lap to go as they are now going around Kinkanpa. And it looks like... Uh, oh, we got it. Here comes the Glide Jr. poking his nose in. Here he comes. The Glide Jr. in truck number seven alongside Gardner. They're heading, and now, as they headed into three, Duglai Jr. slides the back end out. He has to catch it. Gardner is unopposed. Arrow Racing Engineering is going to go three in a row with Jackie Gardner in truck number four. As uh, Gardner takes the win over to Glide Jr., big slide in the last corner cost him. Um, cost him the win, but it was a great drive nonetheless. Dimitri Vidkin, Giovanni Rota, and Manny Garnhardt Jr. all deserve a big pat in the back for their performances tonight. Same goes for everyone else in the top ten who earned points. As you see now, everyone else in the uh, that was running, or rather not running, uh, in some cases. Uh, Oscar Duck the third, 14 laps down. That kind of says enough. Here's what the uh, Drivers' Championship looks like. We're halfway through the season right now. Jackie Gardner leads over Mar his teammate Marco. Ryan and Sessler, those are the main championship contenders. Ryan Zimmer and Dimitri Vidkin could factor in as well. While most of the Reject Truck Super Series takes place on oval tracks, the next race will be at a road course at Lime Rock Park.